I was like so disappointed in myself last week, you guys. I was like, I can't right, believe I didn't have a dad joke. Let's give it to her. Drop, okay. it out, drop it in. Okay. I'm really excited. Okay. If you boil down a funny bone, it turns into a laughing stock. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs>Ready to rock and roll? We're five minutes in. I think we've got everybody. Five minutes in. Let's do it. All right. Today, what we have is uh, really the product of uh, several weeks of testing. So if you remember, and I'm not going to steal Monty's thunder. I'm just going to tee it up for him. About a month ago, LinkedIn's algorithm for company and personal post reach went psychopath. (laughs) And so we talked about it a few weeks ago here. If you were part of that discussion, thank you. And since then, Monty, together with a a lot of you actually here today, and a lot of people not here, have been doing a bunch of tests to see, you know, what what can we learn? uh, What's correlation? What's causation? Can we repeat it? That kind of thing. And with that in mind, Monty, take it from here. Change the world, brother. Change the world. You you have set way too high of an expectation, but uh, (laughs) we'll see. We'll see what we can change for everybody on LinkedIn. Um, yes, so the world changed as it usually does at least once a, ve- once a year on LinkedIn. LinkedIn likes to release a major algorithm update. Um, that's typically annually. Uh, then throughout the year, they will make modifications and massages to that algorithm as it goes. So, um, You know, what was true five, six weeks ago, not necessarily true today, yet there's always foundational truths to any algorithm um, that remain consistent. So prior to getting, jumping in and getting involved with LinkedIn, I was an SEO, quote unquote, expert, if you would, spent all my time trying to figure out um, Google algorithms and search and stuff like that. And so... um, a lot of these practices are very similar, if not the same. Um, you know, there's specific things that any platform is looking for on an ongoing basis, right? But I'll start my screen and we'll jump into some things. Um, so a few things that I'll say up front. Um, a lot of times when you start talking algorithm, one of the very first things that somebody will bring up that is always the truth is in the end, it doesn't matter. Okay. Focus on your target market, focus on creating quality content, go after your target market that you're looking for and the algorithm will take care of itself. So yes, quality content, always good. How you define quality content, you know, is another thing, but, um, The second thing is there's all kinds of reports and all kinds of testing and stuff that people do on the algorithm all the time. Um, Some could be considered scientific, some are not. This is not scientific research that that I've done for you guys. This is based on observation from regular ongoing engagement on the platform. I have a team of people Um, that I've put together really over the past four weeks to start to test some of these things that we have seen and seen if we can come to some answers by way of observation and some fixed parameters, if you would, that we do on posting. And a lot of a lot of those people are here on this call today. And I really appreciate all of you that are willing to engage in that. Um, I have my last screen. If you guys would like to be a part of that group where we're just taking a look at all things LinkedIn, trying to figure things out, you are all welcome to join that and to be a part of that discussion. So with that being said, we'll jump into this real quick because I want I want most of what we're gonna do today to be around discussion and get my panel involved, our panel here on the Mastermind. So first thing is where can you find uh, real solid, information on the LinkedIn algorithm. Um, You have to do some digging. (laughs) Uh, Any 
uh, platform that you're going to be on is not going to give you all the information that you need to be able to work that algorithm to its maximum efficiency. Okay, so you have to do a lot of digging and you have to figure out where you can go. So Isaac has highlighted this first one. Um, they have an engineering blog, but there's that you can get to that um, here. And I'll and we'll post those links into this chat. Isaac, if you can do that for me, that'd be fantastic. Yep, as it was highlighted. Uh, thanks. Okay, perfect. So in this engineering blog, they will talk about a lot of things that they're working on from LinkedIn. Um, the primary way to start searching the algorithm is going to be right here at this blog. Um, I clicked on this article that's in that blog, started reading through it. They will give you other information about what they are doing within it. That will lead, that led me to this little resource right here called KD Nuggets. So in going to the KD Nuggets page, you'll learn that LinkedIn actually hired KD Nuggets, which is a third party company. And they are looking to, and they have taken all of 2020's data. They, LinkedIn gave them access to all of their data cross platform to be able to do some scientific analysis with the sole purpose of automating for multi-objective optimization on LinkedIn's feed ranking. So what it comes down to is what does that mean? Um, basically their objective um, was to create a balance between active content engagement and passive in content, passive content engagement. What is that? So as you know, that when you're out on LinkedIn, there are posts that get high volume engagement, hundreds of views, or I'm sorry, hundreds of comments, hundreds of likes, though that's what they consider active content. So that's high volume engagement to that stuff. The other is passive, and those are most of what content is. Most people are producing content. You're not getting a ton of engagement. It just kind of sits there. You may, may get 100, 200 views at the most, maybe a comment here or there, but it's very what they're considering passive. So what they were trying to do, their primary objective with this latest research and update is can we create more of a balance between what they're calling, and I've got their uh, formula here, this passive, we, call, we used to call that lurkers, right? So passive consumption, <laughs> lurkers are people who will go and look at your post, they'll read your post, they'll click see more, they'll maybe click and open the uh, comments, never put a like, never engage at all. But that person has value, right? That person has value to LinkedIn, it has value to the platform, has value to the users. So um, it's both uh, passive content that doesn't get a lot of engagement and it's passive people on the platform who are there and have value, but not necessarily engaging. Then you got the other side, which is the active. Those are people like me. I'm on the platform all day, every day. I'm engaging many people on a daily basis and I am uh, posting daily as well. So they, they're trying to create a balance between content. And an, another thing is that they're trying to improve your feed. They want to show you more people, um, more new people on an ongoing basis. So that's, that's, you can go and read that Katie Nuggets. I will tell you, it's highly technical. You almost have to be a scientist to read it and understand it, of which I am not. But you can kind of get the general premise of what they're trying to do with it. So why should you care about the algorithm? Um, I'm going to show you a couple screenshots from uh, some of our accounts that we work with. This is one. You can see, and this is hard to see, so I'm just going to point out what it is. Um, in June, we had pushed over 500,000 views to their content. And at our peak in June of this year, and you can see the ski slope that has turned into since then as we move into August and September. And really, if you looked at it on a daily basis, it would be 
it was like a next day drop because that's charting like a month at a time is pretty much one from one day to the next. Exactly. Um, and, yeah. And, and so here's that view for you, right? So this view shows on a daily basis, post, post, post. And this was before we started working with this company. Then when we started working with this company, boom, you can see we're getting the views that we usually uh, expect with what um, a bound does with company posts. It's been fantastic, high volume views. And then August, boom, back to nothing. Now, what we were doing didn't change. We were still doing the exact same thing and working the exact same process that we were doing on this uh, over here. So clearly a change. Just another one to show you, this is our own company page. Boom, same thing and then um, hit an anomaly right here, but pretty much non-existent. So what that does is um, when you're on the platform and you're engaging on a daily basis, that's a signal that there's been an algorithm update. So I started talking about an algorithm update right at the beginning of August. There's clearly something happening. And two, three weeks ago, I can't remember which, I posted a way too early algorithm update based on things that we were observing. So I'll just show you how that's correlated from my personal posts. Uh, as you can see, 106 comments, 86 likes, 4,517 views. This was May of this year. Okay, and again, um, this has 34 comments, 31 likes, 5,272 views. Right, great, not bad numbers. Until you hit last week. 71 comments, 86 likes, 16,800 some odd views. Then 54 comments, 62 likes, 31,000 foreign views. Now we haven't, I haven't seen personally those kind of numbers since mid to late 2019. So what's the change? Um, we, when we started doing all of our uh, looking into what the change has been, we came up with a few key things. So these are the talking points that I'd like our panel to go over and to um, discuss what they're seeing on the platform itself. But um, what I found is this, what I'm coining, if you would, the slow burn effect is absolutely real. Posts prior to about six weeks ago, I could set my clock to when my post would die on a daily basis. If I posted at 7.30 in the morning, I'd get all my comments and stuff very early because that's when most people were on the platform, according to my audience. Then by one o'clock, that post would be done. And it would not see more views. It would not see more comments past that. Now, posts are lasting um, a week or more. So I'm, I will still get notifications to comments and, and things that are happening on a post a week ago. So the slow burn effect is really a, a real thing. It, posts are living much longer in this current algorithm update. Um, LinkedIn seems to be actively eliminating pod manipulation. So if, you're, if you are uh, familiar with pods or unfamiliar with pods, Basically, what they are is a collective of people that get together on, um, it could be through LinkedIn messaging, it could be through another messaging platform like Telegram, where we say, okay, we're going to post, uh, when we post to LinkedIn, we're going to copy that link, we're going to post it into our group chat, so to speak, and then everybody that's in the group, you go click on the link and go over and add a comment and a like. So prior to, you know, five weeks ago, when you did that, what that did was activate the algorithm it would say, yep, this is a high value post. And it would open up your network and show that post to a lot more people. So there was a reason why people, a lot of people jump into pods and, um, and do that because it's working with, so to speak, um, the LinkedIn algorithm. Now, what I'm seeing is that um, LinkedIn is not doing away with pods, so to speak. They're just forcing you to engage in a different way, and they want to see you engage in a different way. And the best way is organically. So if you notice in your feed, 
when you are uh, when you comment on somebody's post on a particular day, the next day their post will show up again if they have post if they posted that day. Right. So the more people you engage, they will flood your feed um, with those people, assuming you want to see their content again. So in a sense, they're in effect creating a pod for you by saying, OK, you like that person yesterday. Do you like them today? If you engage them consistently and regularly over time, my feed is full of all the people that I know exactly um, who they are. I engage them on a regular basis. They organically come and engage my content as well. One, I appreciate their content. They appreciate my content. It works. And so I will get that level of engagement organically. What I'm seeing now is <clears throat> when you, uh, if, if I get 10, 20 different comments within the first hour, it's not moving the mark from views. Five weeks ago, I could count on that post having 2,000, 3,000 views or more within the first hour. Now I may only see 200 to 300, but I may come back uh, later that night and it has 10,000. So what they're doing is they're not jumping necessarily on your first active engagement. They're now just kind of slowly dripping it and slowly watching it as you're getting more views, uh, more likes, more comments over time, they're creating more of an organic feed. Okay, it's more of an organic feed. It's more of an, of an organic uh, engagement. And that's what they want to see. People that are actually on the platform, engaging one another and engaging um, content. So um, responding to your comments quickly does matter. Uh, you'll have higher view counts. And again, it just goes back to, are you active on the platform or are you passive on the platform? If you're passive on the platform, you're not engaging those comments. You're not keeping that conversation going. Um, it's going to limit your post a little bit. Uh, the time that you post does matter. The reason it matters is because even though they're not saying if you get 10 comments, and 10 likes within the first 20 minutes, we're immediately gonna open it up to all of your network. It still matters that you get it. So you still need to get some engagement to it. Um, and it, the best way is for it to be organic. We did do some uh, testing with my group that where we basically created a pseudo pod for one week, posted terribly. So there, uh, and we don't have verifiable because we haven't, we haven't tested it enough, but going from an outside link to your post does seem to diminish it in some way. Is that in the post or the comment? The post itself into in, okay. to your views. So if meaning if I post my post or if I copy the link and I put it in a group and then people are accessing my post through that link, it does seem to have a correlation Oh. of minimizing those views. Whereas really? before, whereas before it would actually boost it. So that's, that's just, and, and again, that's not based on thousands and thousands and thousands of posts that we've done. That's just based on like a one week's test to where we were doing really well. The group was doing really well organically. Once we changed that and it was coming from an external link, everybody's, in fact, I had, uh, one member of the team said, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> it was like, oh, I'm done. So um, links, links in your posts are still bad, period. Link, you know, LinkedIn doesn't want you leaving the platform. So it's, they still diminish those posts. Uh, now, a little tip about creator mode, and then we'll open this up to conversation. Um, Huge conversation about whether creator mode is garbage and actually decreases your views or whether it's good. I've had it on and I've had it off. Um, at first when it came out and I turned it on, views plummeted, didn't get anything. 
I turned it back on. Um, and, and for those of you that aren't familiar with creator mode, what it does is takes your account and, st and the main thing, there's two main things that it does, turns your connect button into a follow button. And it takes your featured articles or your featured post section and it moves it up to the top. So that's the main thing that you see underneath your primary header content. So what I found in, in an, I have been testing more of this is that the secret to creator mode is that you have to feature your posts regularly. So I will feature when I'm posting, I post daily one as if you're in creator mode, you have to be creating content at least three times a week or more. Also, and, and once a day is preferable, once a day is best. If you um, then feature to your profile at least three times, you know, to your content to that, I do, I have seen from my own experience, those posts do better. And I think the reason why is because um, when you look at your personal profile, you have a search, how many times people have searched your profile, how many times people have viewed your profile, all of those people have the opportunity to see that post and may go to it from that section. So that's, that's one thing that I've noticed that if you are in creator mode or you're searching around trying to figure out, is this good? Should I do it? I've had a lot of success with that. Um, Last, and then we'll open it up to conversation. Company page content has yet to recover. They, you know, what LinkedIn uh, prior to this update had many algorithms that they would run. I think, according to Katie Nuggets, I think they said eight separate algorithms. Um, there's a separate algorithm on your mobile device than there was on the desktop platform. So you were dealing with all kinds of different things. One of the things that Katie Nuggets was trying to do was consolidate all of this, all these multiple algorithms down into one. So I don't know if that was implemented on the platform, but it's likely that they did. And the reason that I'm saying that is because company page posts have not recovered. So this slow burn effect of needing to get comments and engagement over time with company pages, you could notify employees. And if you had 10 different employees that would come and engage that post, you'd get great views. They would show it all over the place. And really what we saw was whether you had a big following or not. So now that's not the case. If we notify employees, and we always do, and we go out and get the engagement, it doesn't necessarily move the mark. You have to have almost a slow drip, steady engagement to be able to achieve that. And so that tells me that there's one algorithm applied to all content across the platform, not multiple ones for different scenarios. So with that, um, if you all want to jump into my um, Telegram group to do this ongoing testing and try and figure it out more on an ongoing basis, basis I do this through Telegram, which is a free messaging app. And uh, you can just message me on Telegram at Monty Clark. Awesome. Thanks, Monty. Yeah. Do so you want me to leave uh... this up so you can see the... The different ones to talk about or just launch it uh, okay. all right yeah, we'll let's, leave it yeah let's go to the camera view so moving into panelist discussion so those of you here who are our panelists uh if we could kind of keep our keep it under like a minute that would be great just so that everybody has a chance to chime in and so we have time for open q a i'd love to hear everybody's thoughts on on these bullet points you know uh what have you observed causation correlation have you observed the slow burn is anybody here using and willing to say they're using pods? And has what's your been experience there since that end of August update? Uh, the floor is yours. I can Mary? say that. Um, so commenting early, so um, engagement before and after your posts matter greatly. When yep. someone comments right away and I go back and reply and we have that conversation, I feel like it gets 
at least 20% more engagement. So if someone were to come in at eight in the morning and I were not to go back till three, I'm missing that opportunity. So I agree with that one. Uh, the time that you post matters. I'm 100% behind that. Even if you have an, an amazing network, earlier in the morning is key, like Monte says. The other day I forgot to do, um, I had to manually post a video because um, I use a scheduler for 80% of my, my uh, social media. Um, and I forgot to post it and I didn't post it till like 8.30 and it didn't do as well as when I post at like six or seven. Again, wow. it depends on your time zone. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does. Time zone is very important. And then, you know, I did a video clip from my show that I do and we're doing like these micro clips and they're used, they're starting to do really well. Well, I posted it like at one o'clock on a Friday. It tanked. I'm talking like really bad tanked. So I think that time factor and that day just was not good. Yeah. Yeah. There's only so much runway in the day. And so if, if they're letting it sit for a while <laughs> to give it that runway to get engagement and you take off, you know, halfway down the runway, you're done. And Crystal and I, we had a conversation. You were just saying about, you know, the content. Why would, you know, the my next show coming up? And Crystal, so that was a piece of content, like how to save $10,000 on your websites. And it was a micro video, a snippet of the show, which I thought would have done a lot better. So it, it, it was my content was at the time. I, I want to go with it. It was the time. But, you know. Yeah. Then as... As we're going, if you if, if this sparks some questions for everybody, just drop those questions in the chat and then we'll get to them after the panelist discussion. Any, so, any other? Yeah, go ahead, Crystal. Sorry. Um, well, I, I was going to say in terms of the, um, the slow burn, for me specifically, since LinkedIn made that this first initial major algorithm change you know, a few years ago, I've always seen a slow burn effect. But you still had to get kind of a, an initial like 400 or so whatever views and some engagement right away. And then it would live longer. It would live sometimes up to two weeks. It's been like that for me for a long time. Now, one of the key variables, I think for me compared to maybe you guys is, as I've said, since I specialize in financial advisors, it is a large part of my network that is not as active. And so they're not going into LinkedIn as long as, as much as possible, as much as most other people. And so since they're going in fewer and they're then they're being shown, I think that's a big part of why I would see my posts being active for a long time, for up to two weeks. Um, so I, I think, I do think that your network might have something to do. But now if I did do a post and it didn't get at least some of that immediate engagement, it, it, it died. So it still had to get some, um, some immediate engagement within those first few weeks, but mine would live, have, have always lived for quite a while. Um, I don't post frequently and I post strategically. So, you know, the, just some other things to kind of keep in, in mind with that slow burn. Um, yeah. What I thing. would say to that, what I'd say to that is, is let me clarify what I, what I'm getting at with that. Your posts, and, and you are right, depending on your network, there's a difference. But what I'm, what I'm talking about is if how it like racks up views, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm, if I'm posting, and, and again, I could set my clock, you know, really to when that post would die, you know, prior to this update. So I could post and by one o'clock, the volume of views, how it would, you know, add on views would pretty much be done. That doesn't mean that that yep. post doesn't live there and people will still come and engage it because there are still people, there'll still be people that will come and hit my profile, go to my post, scroll down there, find something interesting and still comment on that. There's absolutely true. And especially if you put that in the feature, but what I've noticed with that is even though people will come back in time, prior to this algorithm update and comment, it's, it wouldn't start the clock again in terms of now I'm going to start adding a lot more views, right? It, it would pretty much be done in terms of a view standpoint, meaning um, LinkedIn's probably not putting it back out to your network because somebody comes and comments on it. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, I was getting some significant additional views, you know, for mine. I have found for me that if I do not get any kind of a, a quick organic engagement, that mm-hmm. right there is like the kiss of death. Um, it is. So- you definitely need to have, um, you definitely need to have engagement early to that post. Um, that is still a real thing. And organic organically getting that engagement is absolutely the best. Can I add mm-hmm. to this? Go yes. on, Judy. A whole different thought on it. Okay. Um, and I go you back. You to keep it to under a minute. Okay. I go back to the, that's it. Um, I go back to the quality versus quantity. And I've had posts that, you know, they go like crazy, but then I look at, like who it is engaging. And I get these bizarro, like third degree, second degree that aren't even in my lane. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak for my clients. Sometimes I see that. It's like, who are these people? So I think if you get one like weird account and then it goes out in their feed. So I'm more concerned mm-hmm. with, with hitting the numbers with my ideal target audience. And that's coming from a B2B marketing perspective. So I'd rather have less engagement with highly engaged connections that are going to, you know, lead to probably business opportunities than just a lot of like, you know, stuff that goes out there. And so, um, and I do see things showing up after a while now. The other thing not mentioned here is tagging. Um, Instead of adding links, Mm -hmm. I will make sure like if I'm quoting somebody, I'll tag them. I use it very judiciously. I do it sometimes in the image as I'm uploading because you can tag that way and it's a little more eloquent. Um, I've noticed that um, documents have gone down in terms of engagement and images have gone up. Um, one account, I do gifts, and they're they're off the charts. The, this supply chain industry, they love it. Um, and polls, like we didn't mention polls here, but polls are still getting. If you can use polls as a way to um, tip, ask a pain point question, not a not a ridiculous question, but a pain point question, and then use that information. I, I do an outreach to invite people to engage with the poll when I'm doing it for business development, and then publish that content. And make it added value. So that's mm-hmm. just again, that's my that's my take on all this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, it, can I take it back on Judy? Because because it ties in with what Go Judy ahead. said. Yeah, and, for sure, Vivica. And earlier, Crystal, um, you know, let, let's not get away. I mean, this whole thing is we're talking so much about the algorithm, but let's let's not let that get in the way of who our audience is too. I mean, Crystal, if you're talking to financial advisors and Judy, you, you know, you're you're talking to another audience. I'm talking to lawyers. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons I chose not to convert to creator mode is because simply because of the fact that that button goes from connect to follow is my audience. They're not on LinkedIn. They're not breathing, eating, sleeping, living LinkedIn like we are. <laughs> so, you know, are they are they going to be confused by follow? Well, no, not follow. They they want to connect for the most part. And so I don't want to I don't want to remove that that opportunity for them. So that's one of the reasons I didn't cho- choose to do, to do um, creator mode. But um now, let me clarify with that real quick, Vivica, because yeah. um, just because you have your button set to follow, you still can connect. People can do right, that. Now, right. now it's, it's, it's pseudo hidden, right? You got to right. click the three right. dots and then, and then select collect or select connect. Yeah. But um, I think the primary thing that I know, so I, you know, my, my network, I have, once I hit 15,000 connections, I changed, even before creator mode came around, I changed mine to follow anyway, because I was more interested in connecting with the people that I specifically want to connect with, because you only have 30,000, which nobody needs 30,000 within your target market anyway. But I'm very focused and hyper, hyper focused on who I connect with and why. So, um, Mm-hmm. having the creator mode and I, I don't care who follows. Me. I, I love the following. I love the engagement. The engagement helps as we've stated here all along, anybody that will engage is a value, but who I specifically connect with and who I'm specifically actually creating my content for is hyper-focused and targeted. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that's a very different audience than, than mine. Um, and that, but that's a, a really good point. I'm, I'm still, I have to admit, I'm still on the fence and I, I don't know about and kind of Jody, what you were saying about who, you know, engages with your posts, these super long posts, right. Where we're using for additional dwell time and the polls. I mean, 
there's so many polls. I've got to think they're going to tank soon because people they are will. up with the polls. I mean, now they they're will. getting a lot of, um, you know, fuel, but, but, um, you know, I have, I have the usual suspects, I call them, and it's the same people that sort of engage in. It's not a coordinated strategic pod by any means, but there are, there's a very similar group mm-hmm. that keeps coming back to, and that I, for whatever reason that my posts are resonating with. But um, one mm-hmm. of the reasons I, I try and tag in the first comment, my newest connections, just to try mm-hmm. and broaden that audience, that seems to help. So I don't have the same uh, usual suspects that I'm very grateful for, but still <laughs> I want to broaden the reach, right? Totally. So I, so I welcome new connections. And I say in the first comment, I'm not sure if I'm getting penalized for that. But in the first comment, I'll say, you know, to my newest connections, what are your thoughts? So I, I post a question, obviously, and then I tag two or three max. Yeah, totally. you know what? How you engage is actually really important too. Um, before I, w- I will spend thirty minutes on the platform before I ever post. I will engage people that I haven't ever engaged with before. I will search through the um, through my feed, and I will find people that are that are associated with what I'm trying that with what I'm doing myself, right? I will go and engage there and I'm trying to find people that I've never engaged before. Then I will go and engage people that I engage every day and I'll make sure that I'm, you know, and, but I, it's not, it's not a mandatory that I have to engage those people and I mix it up. Right. So I think one of the primary updates to this algorithm is organic. They want organic engagement and people living on the platform, if you would. So. Yep. If there was one primary overarching 30,000 foot view update to this algorithm, it's engaged LinkedIn organically. Yeah. Because LinkedIn's going, we make money from ads. Let's reward people who are ads live in the newsfeed. Let's make sure people are in the newsfeed where mm-hmm. ads live. Yes. Well, it's true. well actually, they are a business. We, I mean, sometimes we forget that, yeah. right? They, they, I don't. It is. <laughs> so, so. It makes sense, and I'm pretty much all the social platforms do that, right? They want you to stay there as long as possible, so they can show you advertising or sell you something themselves. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, it's the truth. Yeah, and- it's from my theory. It's one of the reasons traditionally why graphics haven't done so well. They compete with ads. So mm-hmm. when you don't have a lot of graphics out there or a lot of video out there, right? You're you're paying attention to a lot of the ads. So. I will say in terms of the the pod issue, I am not surprised. I don't know if you, for those who want to go check out the engineering blog, they recently put together an article of a new algorithm that's meant to identify bad behavior, um, any types of Mm -hmm. automation, which would be both the Black Hat automation software for connecting and messaging, but also for pods, because there are a lot more now Black Hat software programs to encourage pod-like behavior. Yes. And it's real, to me, it's very easy for them to identify, You know, as you saw in your experiment, if someone has found that post organically and is engaging with it, or if they are clicking straight through it, that is that immediate proof that it is not an organic engagement. So it's very easy to, to see that. Um, so I'm not, but there's some other, it's, that was kind of an interesting article. People want to see, you know, how they're, what it's kind of a a series of different types of activities that they are tracking to identify who's being a bad actor or not. Yep. Yep. So we've got, we've got about 15 minutes here. Let's make sure that we, uh, make time for some open Q and a. So, uh, if we could, Monty, if you could stop sharing your screen, there was a couple questions yes. that came in. I'm just going to read a couple that came in from the chat. I would, would love for everybody to be able to jump on with your camera and mic and stuff, but just for the sake of time, let me kind of go through a couple here. And then, Eliko, I see if you got your hand up, so we'll get to you in just a minute. Uh, Jennifer asked a, a great question. Again, uh, Monty and panelists, feel free to chime in as well here. Do you find that using a scheduler, like scheduling tool, diminishes impressions on posts thoughts from my standpoint no um what if you can use a scheduler if you use a scheduler and then do not engage the platform yes okay i think that um so 80 percent of my stuff goes out through a scheduler but then i do some organic posts and i think that that helps so 
you know, I always tell my clients, yes, you can use a scheduler because, you know, if you're writing, you know, Crystal, you write really long posts. Monty, you write. If I were to sit and do that, that every morning, like it, I would have to get up at 5 a.m. to get that done on a time to post it on time. So um, I do use my schedule for some of my like announcements of my shows and my bite-sized tips. And then I throw in the organic stuff. And I think it's that mix that helps. And Monty, like you said, engaging, mm -hmm. <laughs> engaging um, with, the, with on that post with people that are commenting. Yep. Engagement's the key. Hey, I have a question on, on one thing. Um, when you're posting to a profile versus posting to a company page, is it better to originate on one versus the other? So in other words, do I post it on like the principal company person's uh, profile and then bring that link into the company page or do I put it on the company page and then bring it out to the profile? Let's say the profile has 5,000 followers. So which, which way do you think does it have an impact? Are you yes, trying I mean, to grow? Are you trying to grow the company page followers? Um, not necessarily. It's just more or less having a, a, a double hit in the feed, so the mm -hmm. followers potentially might see it. I don't know, um, and and definitely I know the audience in the main account is going to see it because they have five thousand connections. So, um, but I'm wondering which way is it redundant? Because um, LinkedIn can it tell that it's an outbound link, or does it realize it's staying in the home? Is, have you seen any difference, Monty? Because I know you do a lot of company page posts. Um, company, you know, company page posts are a little bit differently because you're going to have a different strategy with company page posts. You know, it is extremely difficult, regardless, extremely difficult to get engagement to a company page post. So I would not worry at all about putting links off platform on company page posts because you're not going to get, I mean, you're not going to get the views for it anyway. What you're going for is to develop your brand authority. And it's mostly going to be through people that you're actively, and the team in the company is actively engaging on the platform that will then go out for their education and their social proof through the company page. So um, I, I, would not, I would not hesitate to add links to company page posts at all. One of things you said, yeah, is strategy. And that, is strategy. that's what hits home is whatever you're doing, have a strategy. Yes. Yeah, and and get it? Um, I like to test things. So sometimes mm -hmm. I'll do, for instance, this, because I am my business, it's a little easier on my personal page, but I'll do the exact same post on my personal page and on my company page. Then there are times mm -hmm. where I share things from one to the other just to kind of see if it's different. But honestly, I don't unless I'm working with somebody who has a, a larger organization and is looking to hire, looking to do that sort of thing, I worry less about the company page and just use it as a place if people stumble upon it, that they'll see that, you know, I'm a real business and what I have to say and eventually come yeah. to my personal profile. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, 10 minutes left. We've got a great question that came in from Liam. So I'm going to paraphrase, Liam. hope that's okay. Uh, active on the platform for reasons. He had to leave and then came back after six months. Active again. He's not seeing the same sort of metrics. Is that normal to be expected? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Exactly the same thing happened to me. I've been gone four months because of a family emergency or tragedy. Mm -hmm death and and it's taking me a long time to come back i mean a long time so it's a slow steady climb sorry money go ahead no i i agree with you I, I think the reason why is because you know as it when you're when you're rolling content out on a regular basis whatever your cadence for that is and hopefully it's at least three times a week if you're actively and i'm assuming that everybody on this call is probably posting fairly often when you do that, you start to build up what we call your tribe, right? I mean, those are people that are going to be seeing your stuff and regularly engaging with you. When you disappear, so is your tribe. So it may take a while for them. They're also out there engaging other people. So LinkedIn is showing that new content in their feed. So when you come back and you start engaging and posting out there, if you don't have that tribe or those people that are immediately coming back and engaging with you again, it is going to take a while to build that back up. 
how you do it quickly is get out there and engage those people yourself and bring that tribe back into you. But you're right. It, it, it will take a little bit of time. Emily had a great question. Does having premium affect your post views, that kind of thing? And I'll just actually start answering them real quick because it is a great question. Uh, if you pay to play with a premium account, it's not going to directly give your posts a boost. However, it might indirectly be a driver because when you when you pay for premium, you do have some restrictions li like lifted. You can view more profiles, you can do more search, and that really turns into you can engage with more people. And because you now have that ceiling lifted of how many people you can engage, if you are doing content, it can indirectly give you more opportunity for your for your reach to grow because of a something earlier up the stream. But not if you just start paying for premium, you're not going to instantly see a uh, a post reach increase. It's going to be more because you can do other things with it. And by the way, let me add something to that. By means of the your SSI score, your social selling index, the only way you're going to get that above 80 is if you are engaging the platform through Sales Navigator. You will not increase that past that if you are only on a free account. So there's a recent study out there that talks about getting your SSI score up. You can only do that if you have a premium account. Ildiko, what's your question? Thanks for being so patient. Yeah, guys, it's it's not really a question. I just wanted to relate what Monty said, that uh, infographics are not so popular because they are competing with ads. And based on my experiences, uh, I have an observation that, for instance, when I prepare an image with a message, let's say a quote, and I post it as an image, it performs really well. While at the same time, if I turn it into a short video, it performs really bad. And my question is that, do you think guys, that there is a correlation between the percentage of the text uh, fulfills the image? Uh, how many percentage is that? Uh, if it observed as an ad or a competitor as an, to an ad or not? Because as far as you know, for instance, uh, Facebook ads, uh, it has determined how many percentage of the, of the image can be text or can be fulfilled with messages. So do you think, is there a same thing with, with uh, Facebook images? Oh, sorry, <laughs> LinkedIn images, when, you, when yeah. you just post it as, as, as a normal image? That's a great question. Any thoughts on that? No? Help me understand the question again real quick. Isaac, what's so, it? so like to there's when you do like a paid ad on Facebook, they're going to look at your picture and yeah. say, what's the text to image ratio? Because they're saying that yeah. there's oh. a sweet spot there for users. Do you think that maybe, or have you, have you thought about it? And if so, have you maybe dug into it at all? If you do that on LinkedIn organically, does it make a difference on the text to image ratio? Is that a fair summary, Hildika? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Thanks for LinkedIn's, summing up. <laughs> LinkedIn's always four to four in terms of your image size and stuff. So I, I'm assuming you're talking about long form content within that ad as opposed to short form? With no, the, actual, the actual image itself. You, so you use like Photoshop, create the image, and then there's text on the image, and then there's an image. There's a ratio that Facebook looks at before your post can go, your ad can go live because they don't want to see just a picture with a bunch of text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it moves the mark. Um, yeah, and how so. is it possible that the same image with the same message performs really great as a simple image, while the same thing converted into a short video performs really bad? And I tested it several times. There are yeah, video. Video. Yeah, it's it's because they they've really devalued video. I mean, that's just a that's just the basic answer. Anything over what? 30 seconds on video is going to perform poorly, um, not get the views. You have to get like 100 times the comments, 100 times the likes on videos to get oh. the same kind of count that you can get on a text post. So that that's going to follow true with mm -hmm. ads and stuff. Too. But it's shorter than 30 minutes and it's definitely an, or, or, uh, an organic video prepared for LinkedIn specifically. There are no mm -hmm. logos in it, nothing. Just a simple message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, and again... So I, I don't mean, use the format anymore because of this low in, rate of engagement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, 
Go ahead, Isaac. Oh, that's okay. I was going to switch to the next one because we've got just a couple minutes left. Okay, go ahead. Did you? Is there an important follow up on that? No, go ahead. Uh, William, and then this probably be our last one, unless there's any earth shattering ones that you want to drop in the chat here. You've got about two minutes left. Uh, uh, so, and I, there were a couple I skipped over. Sorry, just trying to prioritize. Uh, so, you mentioned putting a post link in your featured section right after it goes live. Oh. Is that something that, and maybe we don't have the data for this. Is that something that you'd want to do right after posting or do you want to let wait for it to kind of slow down and then add it? Does it matter? Um, I do it on the same day and I typically wait a couple of hours, a couple of hours for it to jump through my network a little bit and to get that engagement. And then I will add it to my featured section. So one of the things is if it's a total flop dud, I don't want to add it to my featured section. So <laughs> if I'm, if I am getting the engagement to it and it does look like it's picking up some speed, then I'll add it. Gotcha. Oh, let's see here. Erica, that was a great question about the video. I, I don't think we'd really have time to get into that. It's probably a little bit longer. Um, great question though. I think it we could be probably, a whole other session, really. It could be a whole other session, yeah. Uh, because there's there's algorithm stuff, and then there's you know, yeah, there's media types, that kind of thing. So let's let's call it a, a day for today. Uh, before we do, while I have you all, we really want to have topics here that matter to everybody here. So if you want to really quick uh, throw in the chat or just chime in. Is there anything, give any topics, objections? I mean, we always have like a, a production queue that we want to go through, but if you have any ideas or something that you want us to, to talk about, you can drop it in the chat here. You can drop it in the, the event chat as well. It, we love your feedback or you can email me, whatever. It's totally fine. Yeah, let me add to Isaac, that. are you keeping the same event open so that once yeah. everyone's on it? <laughs> Yes, we're giving we it are. a whirl. Yep. <laughs> we're yep. giving we're it a try. We're going to try keeping the event open and we'd love to have yep. your guys' involvement and engagement out there. We're going to post to that on an ongoing basis, do polls, even create the chat out there. So if you have questions ongoing, please feel free to drop those into um, the event, um, either in a post, comments, chat, whatever. Um, you guys are more than welcome to do this. We'd really love to see this be an active community um, for you all. So, and for our panel. So if you, um, want to engage there, that's what this is for. Please, um, stay up to date with us and, uh, we'll keep rolling these out. Awesome. Well, big thanks to everybody being here. Thank you to our masterminds, everybody making the time to join us and make the world a better place. See y'all next week. Thanks everybody. Appreciate your time.